Good morning. Today we are going to work on solving rational equations. Uh, today we will work on factoring and cross multiplying, so this will be part one. Um, this is Teek's Algebra 2, 2a.6i. So there are three main methods for solving rational equations. There's solve by factoring. We can try to factor and see if any of the factors divide out to zero. Um, and if uh, a fraction is equal to zero, then we can set the factors equal to zero. Number two, we can solve by cross multiplying. If we have two single rational expressions equal to each other, so a fraction equals a fraction, then we can cross multiply and solve. And the third way, we can solve by using the least common denominator. Um, we will not be doing that today. We will be doing that in video three. So we're going to start by solving by factoring. So number one, we look at our numerator, and is the numerator factorable? So I see two terms with a minus sign. Can I take the square root of both of them? If the answer is yes, this is a difference of squares. So x plus 7 and x minus 7. Remember, a difference of squares factors to the square root of each of those terms and one plus sign, one minus sign. Now, if you have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, x plus 7 divided by x plus 7 is equal to 1. All you have left now is x minus 7 equals 0. How do you solve for x? You add 7 to both sides. So x equals a positive 7. And if you plug it back in there and you check if 7 works, 7 will work. Okay, so this is called checking your solutions, and we'll explain later on why it's important to check. So when we check, we're going to take that 7, and we're going to plug it back in here. So this 7 I plugged back in, and this 7 I plugged back in, okay? So on my numerator, 49 minus 49 equals 0. 0 over 14, does it equal to 0? If the answer is yes, then it is a true solution. Okay? So, one of the reasons for checking is because we want to make sure that we our solutions are not in a hole or our solutions are not part of the asymptote. So, we are really checking if the denominator equals to 0. My second fraction is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Is it factorable? Are there any numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 5? Well, which numbers multiply to 6 and add to 5? The answer is 2 and 3. So this factors to x plus 2 and x plus 3. If you have a common factor on the numerator and denominator, these divide out to 1. So all you're left with is x plus 2 equals 0. How do you get x by itself? Subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2. Always check and make sure it works. Um, partially is making sure the denominator does not equal to 0. That will make your equation true. So number 3, we're going to try it again. Okay. Number 3 is two terms with the minus sign. So two terms with the minus sign. Can I take the square root of both of these? If the answer is yes, then this is called a difference of squares. So square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. My signs are a sum and a difference. If they have the same term on the numerator and denominator, they go ahead and divide out to 1. I'm left with x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 from both sides, you get x equals negative 5. And when you plug it back in, it does work. So for those who want to see me check a couple of them, negative 5 squared minus 25 over negative 5 minus 5, we're checking if it does equal to 0. My numerator, negative 5 squared, is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. Okay, so 0 over negative 10 is 0. So it does check out. My number 4. Is my numerator factorable? I'm looking for factors of AC whose sum is B. 
So numbers that multiply to negative 12, but they have to add to negative 1. Well, 4 and 3 give me 12. Okay, one of them has to be a negative. How do I get a negative one? That means the four is a negative. So here are my two factors. So this factor is 2x minus four and x plus three. Which ones are the same on the numerator and denominator? x minus four. So I'm left with x plus three equals zero. What do I do to both sides? Subtract three. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And when I plug it back in, it does work. Okay? So this is one way that we can solve by factoring. This is solving by cross multiplying. If you have one fraction is equal to another fraction, we are going to cross multiply. What that means is these terms are going to get multiplied and these terms are going to get multiplied. We're basically bringing up our denominators, okay? So on my left side, I have three times four x plus five. On my right side, I have nine times x plus one. When I multiply, when I distribute that three, I get 12 x plus 15. When I distribute the nine, I get 9x plus 9. Now is to try and solve for x. So we're going to go ahead and combine like terms. I'm going to move the 9x over. How do I move a positive 9x over? I do the inverse, so I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. How do I move the 15 over? Since I can do it at the same time, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. Remember, you always do the opposite sign of what you see. I am left with 3x equals negative 6. Divide by 3 on both sides. My answer is negative 2. Now I look at my denominators. If I plug in a negative 2, does it give me a division by 0? It does not, and this answer does work. Question number 2, I'm going to start off with cross multiplying again. Remember, the reason we cross multiply is to get rid of our denominators. So I'm going to start with 3 times x minus 7 is equal to 2 times 5x. On my left, I need to distribute the 3. I get 3x minus 21. On my right, I distribute the 2, and I just get 10x. Okay? Okay. So my next step would be to move the 3x over. I'm going to move the 3x by subtracting it from both sides because you do the inverse. You do the opposite sign. So I'm left with negative 21 equals 7x. Next step is to divide by 7 on both sides. My answer becomes negative 3. I need to check. If I plug in a negative 3 on my denominators, does it give me a division by 0? The answer is no, so that is my solution. Question number three, cross multiply. So four times x plus six equals five times two x. I'm gonna distribute on my left, four x plus 24 equals 10x. Subtract 4x from both sides. We get 24 equals 6x. How do I move that 6 to the other side? I divide by 6 on both sides. My answer is 4 equals x or x equals 4. Now I'm going to check my denominators. If I plug it into my denominators, does it give me division by 0? No then that is my answer. Question number four. I'm going to cross multiply on both sides. On my left side, I'm ending up with six times x plus one is equal to nine times x minus one. Distribute on my left, I get six x plus six 
is equal to 9x minus 9. My next step is to subtract 6x from both sides. I can also move my negative 9 over. How do I move a negative 9 over? I add 9 to both sides. So I'm left with 15 equals 3x. I divide by 3, and my answer is going to be 5 equals x. Because I always check that if I plug it back in, does it give me true solutions? The biggest thing is making sure I don't have a division by 0, and the solution does work. Couple more questions here. Okay, we're just going to look at what method should we choose. So the first one, I don't have two fractions equal to each other. So I'm not going to cross multiply. On this one, I'm going to try factoring. So factoring will be my first option I'm going to do. Is my numerator factorable? Are there two numbers that multiply to AC, but if I add them together, they equal B? Well, I have 4 and 2. 4 and 2, if I multiply, give me 8. Now, so one of them has to be negative. Don't forget that this one tells you the bigger number needs to be positive. So this is actually x plus 4, x minus 2. Again, if you have a common factor on the numerator and denominator, these divide to 1. I'm left with x plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides, you get x equals negative 4. You should always check your solutions. So I didn't really have space on a lot of the other ones. This one I do, so a perfect problem would show me the work of checking it. So I'm going to plug it into all of my x values. Negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 4 minus 8 divided by negative 4 minus 2. Does it equal 0? So the numerator I have positive 16, minus 8, minus 8, I do get 0, it does check out. Okay. My second fraction is not equal to 0, so I and I don't see anything factorable, so I'm going to cross multiply. Okay. Bring up the x plus 2 and put it next to the 9. Bring up the 3x and put it next to the 4. Distribute into your parentheses. How do I move a positive 9x to the other side? I subtract 9x. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So 18 equals 3x. Next step is to divide by 3 on both sides. My answer is 6. And when I plug it into the equations, it does work. I check 9 over, well, what's 3 times 6? 9 over 18. Does it equal 4 over, okay, and what I'm doing is I'm going up here, guys, and just plugging it in. So 9 over 3 times 6 is 18. Equals 4 over, what is 6 plus 2? 8. Now look at those fractions. 9 over 18 is 1 half. 4 over 8 is 1 half. They do equal to each other. This problem checks out. Thank you for watching this video. If it helped you understand this concept at all, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel. Well, I will be posting more educational videos. Have a great day.